watching Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. Good evening. It's Thursday, March 14th, 2002. I'm Courtney Wilson. And I'm Susan Onrad. Tonight, our top story, the latest on the war against terror. In Afghanistan, U.S. military leaders are com committed to continuing Operation Anaconda. They vowed not to let any al-Qaeda forces escape from the eastern mountains. But as Martin Savage reports, the campaign has moved from an all-out assault to a more subtle strategy. As Operation Anaconda closes in on the two-week mark, the largest military action of war in Afghanistan shows no sign of ending. But it does seem to be moving into a new phase. We now have a light infantry on the Lael and Indushai Kaudeli area doing what we call sensitive site exploitation. Looking for information, looking in the caves, looking in the area. New troops have been airlifted into the lower Shahikot Valley, among them close to 500 Canadian soldiers. For Canada, it is the first combat operation for ground forces since the Korean War half a century ago. We're proud to uh, take part of this war against terrorism with our coalition brothers, and uh, we're making history here. History is also the word used to describe the Taliban and Al-Qaeda fighters in the eastern Afghan valley. We've rid the world of hundreds of trained killers who will now not slaughter innocent men, women, and children. General Hagenbeck said the number of those Taliban and Al-Qaeda forces still alive in the area is less than 100, down from a peak projected force of close to 1,000. At one point in the battle, military sources say they learned Al-Qaeda commanders put out a call for hundreds of coffins and vehicles to transport the dead. Reportedly, they never arrived. But were Osama bin Laden, or Taliban leader Mullah Mohammed Omar, thought to be among those killed? Uh, we do know that we've killed some second, third tier level Al-Qaeda leadership. Uh, we've gotten that information from uh, some of the detainees that we picked up. The big names that you and I are most familiar with, however, indications are that they were not in this valley. Just to be sure, coalition forces are said to be taking DNA samples from some of the dead. Even when Operation Anaconda does end, military officials say the hunt for terrorist leaders will not. If I was an Al-Qaeda leader, uh, I'd sleep with one eye open. Martin Savage, CNN, Bagram, Afghanistan. There are new developments in the kidnapping and murder case of Wall Street Journal reporter Daniel Pearl, who was abducted in Pakistan earlier this year. Attorney General John Ashcroft has just announced a federal indictment of the lead suspect in Pearl's death. His name is Ahmad Omar Saeed Sheikh. The issue is complicated. Good afternoon. The issue is complicated because Today I'm Saeed announcing a grand jury's indictment in Pakistan and the Ahmed U.S. has Omar no extradition Saeed's agreement with Sheikh that country. U.S. officials have been talking with their Pakistani Pakistan counterparts about handing over Saeed and possibly other suspects. And all four people, including Saeed, have been arrested in the case in Pakistan. Others remain at large. More remains were moved from ground zero of the World Trade Center towers Thursday. According to New York City officials, there have been five possible recoveries of firefighters in the South Tower area and two possible recoveries of civilians in the past 24 hours. Also today, Irish President Mary McKellie participated in a wreath-laying ceremony at the Ground Zero platform. We have an update on the story about the Clarion County solicitor, Terry Pope. He has filed a motion asking that a default notice against the county be dismissed regarding a lawsuit about its security ordinance. Pope wrote his motion to strike the notice because it is, a, it is clearly in violation of the extension agreement reached between Pope and plaintiff's lawyer, William Strong. The county was initially given 20 days in which to respond to the lawsuit. Failure to take action, the county must act within 10 days of the notice or judgment will be entered against it without a hearing. No more details are known at this time. Authorities are hoping someone may have seen something suspicious in connection with Tuesday, Tuesday's incident at Cranberry High School. Apparently, a suspected bomb was found that was later found to be fake. Emergency response workers spent half the day ensuring public safety to students, parents, and staff. A teacher found the look-alike bomb in the parking lot between staff parking and student parking. 
State policeman Richard Wadlow said, although the device turned out to be phony, the crime is real and punishable by up to two years behind bars. Students were evacuated from the high school and the elementary school nearby. Police say it's too early in the investigation to say whether more than one person was involved. Clarion County Director of Central Accounting R. Scott Kiefer is looking at different ways to repay the 12-month construction loan used to fund the courthouse exterior renovation project. Kiefer said the $2 million loan is due November 30th. The county has drawn about $1.5 million of the loan, including a $900,000 portion in December and another $600,000 this month. The prison construction debt is approximately $2.6 million. The commissioner said they would like to begin the renovation project by the end of the year. In search of a new county warden for Clarion County, the field of applicants for the vacant position is expected to expand. The job description is seeking candidates who have a bachelor's degree in law enforcement or a related field plus a minimum of five years experience in a management or administrative capacity for a correctional criminal justice law or law enforcement agency is preferred. County Director of Human Resources Scott Kiefer said that the change was made to increase the number of applicants for the position. He said that many applicants for the position did not meet requirements especially for a bachelor's degree. Applications are due March 31st. Further information has not been discussed. On March 6, Clarion Borough Council agreed to move ahead with traffic study of U.S. Route 322 where Clarion University is seeking a crosswalk. PennDOT estimates the project costs between $20,000 and $30,000. Council added provisions that the university pay all the costs of the study, installation, and maintenance of the crosswalk. PennDOT engineers visited the site and told borough officials they believe the crosswalk will require an activated signal with lights to stop traffic. Further details have not yet been discussed. Clarion's most elite were out to dinner last night, and that includes TV5's own Mark Despotakis and Kelly Esno. The VFW held its annual awards banquet. The banquet honored Clarion's best, including Clarion University and Clarion's Fireman of the Year. Also being honored were several of the VFW's outstanding members. The dinner started at 6.30, and the festivities lasted throughout the night. Up next, Clarion hosted a job fair today. We'll tell you if there are any good jobs in the area. But first, it's your turn. Your turn to let us know how you feel. Email us, email us, or call us here at TV5 and let us know what you want to hear about. Did you know there are four places in the U.S. named Shamrock, the floral emblem of Ireland? The nearest to Clarion is Mount Gay Shamrock, West Virginia. TV5 News Live will continue after this. Clarion was brought to you by the Clarion Bull Arena, located on Route 322, one mile east of Clarion. Bull Arena offers rock and bull every Friday and Saturday night, and a game room with eight pool tables and arcade games. Bull Arena also offers bumper bowling for kids' birthdays and league play for adults. Call 764-3471. Again, that's 764-3471. What is a hero? Are heroes born? Or are they made? In after-school programs, your kids will uncover hidden strengths, discover they have the power to change their future, and find the hero inside themselves. Let us know you on after-school programs in your area. Call 1-800-USA-LEARN. After-school programs. Helping kids find the hero within. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by the Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant. The Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant is located at 540 Main Street in Clarion and offers dining as well as a nightclub. The restaurant and nightclub are open seven days a week for your convenience. Call the Captain Loomis Hotel and Restaurant, 226-8400. I'm the best thing you ever had. Only thing I'm guilty of. Giving you too much love. Making you, making you crazy, making you rap. Making me fall, making me suspect. Seem to think I'm playing her game. Don't you know? Don't you know her? This is me. There's a better way to have fun with history. Visit AmericasLibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. 
It was the perfect day for you to find one. Clarion Mall held their job fair today, and the mall was packed. TV5's Kelly Esno was among the many job seekers and has this report. Clarion Kelly's third annual job fair was held today at the Clarion Mall. The event ran from 9.30 this morning to 6 this evening. The lead sponsor this year was CareerLink. The job fair this year added a new element for job seekers, free seminars. The seminars covered areas such as interview techniques, how to identify job options, and how to keep your job. We had four seminars this year. Uh, uh, become better uh, job interviewees, and so hopefully improve their skills. Some came for a career change. One may have found employment in the correctional field. I went to college for that about 10 years ago, so I was basically interested in that. There's a lot of... Uh, enticing um, <coughs> opportunities for the Department of Corrections. Many came to the job fair to find employment, but others had ulterior motives. This high school student was asked what he found interesting. People. A lot of people. Girls. Uh, we've had some very good applicants, and it's been a constant flow. It's not been, um, in the past we've had like surges, but it's been a constant flow and I've had very positive comments from the employers. The Clarion County Job Fair has ended and all indications were it was a success. There is no set date for next year, but it is definitely in the works. At the Clarion Mall, I'm Kelly Esno for TV5 News. A Pleasantville man announced that he will be running for a fourth term during an internet news conference on Wednesday. Congressman John Peterson will be seeking re-election to the U.S. Congress from the 5th District for another two-year term. In announcing his candidacy, Peterson said 5th District residents are blessed by living in an area with such a rich heritage. Peterson said that challenges that face rural Pennsylvania include businesses that are closing, workers who are losing their jobs, lack of sufficient technology training, struggling hospitals and health care providers. Peterson previously served as a Pleasantville Borough Council member, a state representative, and a state senator until being elected to his first term to the to U.S. Congress in 1996. Russell Yates walked into a Houston courtroom this morning for the penalty phase of his wife's murder trial. Tuesday evening, a jury found Andrea Yates guilty of drowning her kids in a bathtub. Andrea Yates' sentence will be decided by the same jurors who convicted her on two counts of capital murder. They'll choose between life in prison or death by lethal injection. Defense attorneys are expected to call as many as eight witnesses in their bid to save Yates' life. The prosecution is not expected to present any testimony against her. It was 17 years ago that National Geographic featured the photo of an Afghan girl on its cover. The response was overwhelming. Years later, the photographer tried to find her again, a search that took more than a decade. Gordon Robinson has the story. It is one of the world's most famous images. Photographer Steve McCurry took the haunting picture of an Afghan refugee girl in 1984. It appeared on the cover of National Geographic magazine in June of 1985 and has often been reproduced in the years since. I've been looking for this girl for pretty much since I photographed her back in 1984. I don't think a day has gone by in all those years that I didn't get a letter or some kind of request wanting to know what happened to her, where is she, how, how can we help her. Recently, McCurry returned to Afghanistan to look for the girl, not knowing her name or even whether she was still alive. New retinal scan technology offered a hope of finding her. Photographs of women taken today could be compared with McCurry's original image. McCurry began in the camp where the girl lived 18 years ago. One man, after looking and looking and false leads and disappointments, one man came forward and said, you know, that girl used to live next door to me, and I know where her brother lives. He's living in a small village in Afghanistan. He offered to go in, and to our astonishment, he came back three days later, not only with the brother, but with Sharbat Gula, the girl, 
in the picture and she brought her two young daughters. It was just the most miraculous thing. Her name is Sharbat Gula and McCurry's search for her is the subject of a new documentary. This month she is again on the cover of National Geographic. McCurry says the magazine is setting up a fund to help her and her family. Gula, he says, wants to see her children educated and she wants to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. Gordon Robison, CNN. officials say Miss Cleo, the popular psychic hotline spokeswoman, is not from Jamaica. They say she is actually from California and was born Yuri Del Harris. The Florida Attorney General's office produced a birth certificate that says her parents are from Texas, in California, and that she was born on August 13, 1962, in Los Angeles County Hospital. Harris, or Cleo, appears nationwide on television commercials in which she promises insights all sorts of personal matters. The state is suing Harris for fraud, and she has challenged her to prove and has challenged her to prove she is a prominent psychic from Jamaica. Kissing Jessica Stein is a new comedy in which two women try to figure the difference between love and friendship. Anna Hovind reports. Yeah, sure. It's no real rush. Are you sure? Yeah, sure. But you really... Not at all. How about 10 days? 10 days is better. Yeah, I think we also wanted to take, to take the... Um, you know, the conventional romantic comedy formula and turn it, on, turn it on its head a little bit so that what you expect to see is, is, is always twisted a little bit. Jurgensen and Westbelt not only star in the film, but they wrote it as well. And when it came to casting, there was no way they were going to let anyone else play the roles. When so, you come to the writing process as actors, that's really why you're there. You're writing as an actor to, to, to breathe life into a character. So when you create a character out of your own voice and your own mind, you don't just want to it would be like letting your baby go or something. Right. Filming in New York City on a limited budget meant making every moment count. We basically flagged a cab, paid the cab driver, you know, like $20. Charlie, our director, drove the cab. Our DP, Larry Sher, was like hunched in the front passenger seat with a camera. And the sound lady was, was locked in the trunk. <laughs> and she was sort of shouting directives at us, you know, I can't hear you, or your mic is muffled. Yeah. The film brings up the age-old question. Tell us exactly, exactly what is it about two women to that you find so exciting. We've been pondering that. We're not really sure. Um, it does seem as though women are allowed to, to be more fluid with their sexuality in this culture than men. And, and w as far as men getting turned on by it, it double <laughs> sexy. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I know, know we really have no, about. yeah, I mean, more of good. <laughs> like, we can't quite. Thing, uh, um, what does your therapist say about all this? Oh, I can never tell my therapist. Why not? Because it's private. Anna Hovind reporting. It was such a beautiful day today. Up next, Kristen Knighton will be here to tell us if we can expect the same tomorrow. But first, here's a look at tonight's stock report. I was making money stealing cars. Well, I was 10 when I first got involved with drugs. I skipped school because, you know, nobody cared. When I first got pregnant, school was not important to me, so I dropped out. Well, if I don't finish school, then I can't go to college. I mean, that's the whole point of what I want to do with my life. I still need to go to school and make, make it for myself. I think I'm happier now. I know I'm happier now. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by Fox's Pizza Den. Fox's Pizza Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone 226-5555. You know, we sing for millions of girls, but helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply. I'm the cute one, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been backstage before? Cause you're the exit. I think you'll find that gravity is key in what I do. Once was one, but now we're two. I'm spinning out of here. <laughs> 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 
Ow. This portion of the program is made possible through a grant from Clarion Hospital. Clarion Hospital is located off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Clarion Hospital offers outpatient services, transitional care, as well as an emergency room open around the clock every day of the year. More than 400 employees and 80 physicians work to serve the community. Call the Clarion Hospital at 226-9500. Clarion Hospital, providing health care to Clarion County and surrounding communities since 1954. Welcome back. Kristen Knighton is here with the weather. I don't believe how nice of a day it was today. Yes, it was definitely a beautiful day here in Clarion. We can expect the temperatures to stay in the 50s and 60s over the next week and, and the beginning of next week. Today was partly cloudy with a high of 60. Looking at the satellite map, you can see the cloud coverage around the eastern coast. The heavy coverage remains in the central United States. Clouds will move in, in the weekend, which will bring possible rain showers. Let's take a look at the map for tomorrow. There is not much precip precipitation occurring in our area. Showers are expected to arrive tomorrow and stay throughout the weekend. Snow is accumulating in the central states. Tonight we can expect a nice night with a low reaching 47 degrees. The warm front is continuing to move its way, which will make the temperatures rise significantly. Let's take a look at tomorrow's map. Tomorrow's temperature will reach a high of 69 degrees. Don't get too excited because there's a chance of rain showers. As you can see, the warm front is staying with us. There is still excessive amount of precipitation in the central northern states. The low tomorrow night will be in the 40s. Let's take a look at our five-day forecast to see what we can expect for the weekend. Friday, is showers, a high of 69, a low of 40. Saturday, showers, high of 61, low of 19. Sunday, is sunny high of 50 and a low of 20. Monday is partly cloudy, a high of 56 and a low of 34. Tuesday is light rain, high of 54 and a low of 32. <coughs> That's it for today's weather. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thanks, Kristen. Hope you do too. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Water, water everywhere, except falling from the sky. Several areas of the U.S. are facing drought conditions. Elaine Quijano reports on what federal weather officials think dude, about the chance of relief. Rain, a rare sight these days along the East Coast and in parts of the West, suffering a four-year drought. We only need above normal rainfall, basically, uh, to get out of these conditions. How bad is it? In the Washington, D.C. area, the precipitation deficit is roughly 13 inches, about the height of this rain gauge. In New Jersey, the governor has declared a statewide water emergency. And in areas of the West, snow cover is only half the normal level. The state's hit hardest include Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. Now, forecasters at NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, predict things will only appear to change in the next few months, at least on the East Coast. More frequent rain, not enough to break the drought, enough to keep the grass green and maybe give the indication to everybody that the worst is over, but the worst is not over. Some communities here in the east have already taken action by imposing water restrictions, but out west there's a bigger concern. From a weather point of view, we're seeing conditions that could um, give us the potential for having an active fire season out there. For now, scientists say the current drought isn't as severe as those in the past. But without any heavy sustained rains in the forecast, the drought conditions aren't likely to go away anytime soon. In Washington, I'm Elaine Quijano. She resigned. Oh, shit. For the first time, hundreds of treasures from the baseball museum at Co Cooperstone, Cooper, Cooperstown are hitting the road. And the first stop on the exhibit's 10 city four year tour is New York. Our batter up is Jean, Jean Mose. Take me out to the board. Take me out to the museum. A museum better known for stuffed reptiles has gone batty over baseball. Maris's bat, McGuire's bat, Sosa's bat. All right, you guys look at all the things in here, and then we have a quiz when it's over. 
Former Yankee Dave Winfield was one of 24 Hall of Famers on hand to open the baseball exhibit and sample 10 different hot dogs from various ballparks at the American Museum of Natural History. It's all about baseball's impact Wham! on American culture. I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third base. Some 500 items from Cooperstown are taking a road trip. My favorite part of the exhibit is my baseball glove right back there from the 70 World Series. I'm just making sure it doesn't leave here. From the modern glove to the first padded catcher's mitt from 1888. Look at this glove. Uh, How many errors did this catcher have? Move over Piazza. This is a patent drawing for a contraption designed to catch pitch balls and release them through a tube. A different kind of pitching reveals that Lou Gehrig was an aqua velva man, while Jackie Robinson pitched Chesterfields. You'll be huffing around the bases if you smoke home run cigarettes. Thirty years ago, Lou Brock endorsed Brock a pop. Brock a pop. Do you remember the red soda? Yeah, I remember the back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was shocked to see it in here. Not as shocked as we were to see Babe Ruth pushing a line of children's underwear. The exhibit features the original lyrics to Take Me Out to the Ball Game. It's the, what, the second most sung song in America next to Happy Birthday. The exhibit includes handwritten hate mail sent to Hank Aaron. If you think we should honor you, hello, you old slob. Playing ball is better than pink cotton and eating grits. The hate mail is displayed along with fan mail, which begins, Do you ever wonder how many people you have touched? And talk about touching. Well, there's a guy who lost four fingers, but it didn't stop him from playing ball. You know, he strapped the thing over the left of his hand, wrapped it around his thumb, put it in the gloves. There's a ball recovered from the rubble of the World Trade Center. It's in better shape than the oldest baseball in the collection, the 1839 Double Day Ball. <laughs> but there is no... There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. Not even if your hot dog breaks. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out. Ginny Mo, CNN, New York. Up next, Pat Muldowney will be here with tonight's sports. But first, here's a look at tonight's Pennsylvania lottery numbers. Hope you're a winner. This portion of programming is sponsored by Reese Brothers, located in Drake Square Building in Oil City. Reese Brothers offers competitive hourly wage, plus daily bonuses, flexible scheduling, company sponsored health benefits, and paid professional training. Call today at 1 800 365 3500 extension 684 or 677 9236 for your personal interview or stop by and visit the Drake Square Building. Reese Brothers. Where integrity and technology connect. You hear the one about the rabbi and the reverend who like to party? A community coalition got them together with local restaurant owners. Now they host drug-free kids parties. These guys know how to party. It's just one example of what community coalitions can do. But it's not the only way to keep kids away from drugs. Visit HelpYourCommunity.org to find out what your group can do. Because you get more. When you get together. Wardrobe for some TV5 news staff provided by Fashion Bugs located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. Fashion Bug also offers a wide selection of accessories. Fashion Bug is located in the Clarion Mall. Just off exit 62, off Interstate 80. 
Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. and Sunday from noon till 5. The men's NCAA's tournament started today, and TV 5 zone Ben Gibbs is reporting live from Tip and Jim. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Missouri, Tulsa, Kent State, Alabama, Ohio State, Kentucky, and Wake Forest. Still not grasping the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Here's Mike Viviano from CNN with a preview of what to expect. I'm Let's start with the numbers game. Everybody loves number one, and with good reason. Since seeding started in 1979, 12 of the 23 champions have been top seeds. Number one seeds have won each of the last three titles. Being a number two seed is just that, it's second best. Five times a two seed has cut down the nets. The last number two to do it was Kentucky in 1998. It's easy to go with those front running number ones and twos, but what about lower seed surprises? Eight is great. Villanova was an eighth seed when it won it all in 1985, the lowest seeded team ever to claim the crown. The lowest seed ever to reach the final four? Well, that was LSU, seeded 11th when they made it to the semis in 1986. Penn, Wyoming, Southern Illinois, and Boston College are the 11s this year. In picking first round matchups, the 8-9 game is usually the toughest to call. But history says to go with the lower seed. The 9 beats the 8 more often than not, going 39 and 29 in that game. And last year, the 9 seed beat the 8 every time. But let's put science aside and go with more colorful trends, like the team colors, for instance. Blue is the most fashionable color this time of year. More than half of the 63 champions have worn blue en route to the title, which should...